I'm Joe Schneid, get into the world a bit. Um, this is my presentation for my game theory segment two. It's just the contents. Go over everything in the game. So you got it's called War of the Ages. I don't want to read all that, so I'll just keep it brief. The basic narrative is set at the start of the 8th century, which is the start of the Viking Age. It's like a kingdom controlled by like a group of knights. The Vikings won that kingdom. Um, they make an alliance where both share it. And then uh, ultimately, you know, they fall out and then there's big war. That's essentially the game. It's the storyboard I created. Somewhere I'll look at it as well in full show. Uh, uh, most of it will just be like uh, mountains and rocky areas and things like that. Uh, probably want to want to add like woodland areas, just to make it a little different. Add more things in there so it don't get boring. Uh, there's also a giant lake which you can swim across or commandeer boats. That's it for all the terrain. Architecture. As I said, there's two factions almost, so there'll be two castles which are fully furbished. Everything in. And there's two smaller buildings which are like outposts where uh, like the king or whatever can go in there and do his own I only created one object because yeah, I spent more time on the other thing, but it's just you know, like simple weapons and stuff like that bow and arrows, different armor. Uh, character didn't spend a lot of time on the character, but uh, based on Shay from Assassin's Creed Rogue, I, just, I always like the design of their characters and I thought. In my game, like you can play as either the knights or the Vikings. So I thought if you just do one design like that, then it will suit both factions better. NPCs will just be like random knights and Vikings, like generic looking, just walking around the map, doing whatever. Uh, interface, just a simple one, health bar, things like that. Perspectives. Third person, I'd make it. I just always feel like third person's better for action adventure games. Always suits the story better as well, I think, personally. Full motion video like that. I think with a game like that and games like Assassin's Creed, if you don't have cutscenes in them, then people are just gonna like not have a clue what the story is about. So I'd put them in there just for story purposes, really. Nothing else. Uh, if I was to make a next game, then I'd probably do it a few years after the first one. I'd like to, you know, increase the map size, add dynamic weather systems, instead of just always being sunny all the time. Um, if I was to make the first game, it'd probably just be like spamming buttons to kill people. But I'd l if I was to make a second one, then I'd like to improve on that and make it better, more fluid. Um, that's just how I spent most of my time on the environment and architecture. Didn't really spend too much time on the characters. And that's it. This was a round of applause, that's very good. Uh, any volunteers? I did hear some clicking going on, so it was a bit rude that. Any volunteers for how good that was? Good put? It was confident. Yeah, it was confident, calm. Anything that could be improved? Speak a bit louder. A bit louder? Anything else? Ryan, what did you think you were controlling the... There was enough content to be presented behind and he didn't read as much off the screen. He briefed it all, which was good enough to present. He did. Uh, just something you could have added, all those lovely visuals showing the castles and the Viking ships being destroyed, you could have just given a little bit more about, you know, you can really go to town, because you had all those visuals up and you spent a lot of time on them. 
think it, it was worth you mentioning that you know it can really you know blast the castle or blast the the Viking boat and the more you do the more the more points you get things like that so using the visuals that you created but it was really good thank you Josh thanks guys yeah.